every one of us actually want to have a safe bed, right? So that is something that I promise you. And uh, without further ado, yeah, I'm going to start the sharing. Hey, good. So the topic today that I am going to cover, right, will be Mindy on the, we are going to study some, a bit of the past trend and then the current trend to understand what are the best approach if you are coming into District 15. So uh, a lot of our effort or most of the thing that we are going to cover today will be in District 15, right? So for those people who are looking out for investment, I think this is one area, one district whereby uh, it always performed very well as compared to many other districts in Singapore, right? And what is the driving force for the D15 real estate trends and how they affect property prices and investment opportunities. So we are going to come in and zoom in to all these topics for tonight, sharing. And uh, we are going to have some insights into the short-term and the long-term forecast of D15 market and mm -hmm. how are you able to stay ahead of the curve, right? So once you understand all these things that are going to happen, mm -hmm. You know, moving forwards, I'm sure you are able to actually put yourself ahead of the curve, right? So that you will be like a lot of our customers, right? They are able to benefit from all this uh, data that we are going to show to you later on, right? And of course, uh, where are the opportunity? After we study, we understand the trend and so on. We understand what's going to happen in the future. Definitely, we are able to identify, right, some of the area or where are the opportunity that you're supposed to focus, right? And of course, every, uh, every one of us actually buy property and uh, we understand, right? Buy a property, entry price, entry timing is important, but when to exit out also is very, very important, right? Because, I mean, sometimes you might actually hurt that some of your customer or your friends, right? Every time buy property, you never make profits or make a little bit, a little bit of profits, right? So maybe that is actually one of the um, the exit strategy that they are uh, they never apply correctly, right? So maybe they missed some opportunity over there, right? So today we're going to address all this, and I hope this uh, sharing will bring you great value. And important thing is actually you are uh, you are actually well informed on what kind of property you're supposed to buy and what are the things that you have to look out for and what kind of trend that you might want to study, right, uh, for your future property, right? So good. So before I start, I just want to put a disclaimer here. The promise agent, actually, we have a RAM system. A RAM system meaning uh, we are able to do a very detailed uh, analysis on your finances, right? So this is very important when it comes to property investment. Right, so if you are invited by the Promax agent, I'm sure you are able to ask them to actually help you to do some analysis. Right, so this is to prevent that uh, we make some mistake in terms of financial and uh, it will put ourselves into trouble in the future. Right, because property investment is actually a big, big uh, items. Right, I think it's one of the biggest items in most of our life. Right, and of course, we don't want mistake or we don't want uh, things that we never plan properly and end up we have to force sell the, the property or what, or we actually get ourselves into trouble, right? So we don't want to see this kind of thing. So property investment has to be uh, in a very, very safe uh, manner, right? In order to do that, then of course, we have to understand the finance, right? So we have actually a system whereby we are able to analyze your finance and make sure this is actually a very, very safe investment before you put your money down, right? So approach any of our Promax agent uh, so that we, all of us are able to have a very, very safe investment moving forwards, right? Good. Okay. And before I go on, uh, just a little bit introduction about myself, all right? My name is Jip Ng. I'm a senior associate group district director with PropX. 24 years full-time in this market and I've seen many cycles up and down, right? I'm a team leader in PropNex, a trainer, and I'm a project marketing chief in charge. I handle some, uh, I mean, a fair bit of projects, right? Uh, from condominium to lender property as well. And in I'm a bootcamp chief facilitators in the PropNex signature bootcamp program, right? So in so many years of 
I mean, experience in the market, I've seen up and down, uh, different com- different cycle come and go. And I actually have helped many homeowners, buyers, sellers actually fulfill their dreams, right? So today I'm going to use my experience um, to share with all of you, right? With all the data that I have put in, uh, in um, a lot of the data are actually from the online and most of them are from URA if you see numbers. So they are all government figures and it's very accurate because we pull figures from URA. So I hope it actually benefit you and couple with the kind of case study that I'm going to put in and uh, of course, couple with my experience in terms of real estate market, I'm going to actually give you a very good sharing uh, insights of the District 15 market. Right, so guys, are you ready? Are you ready? If you are ready and you have actually already grabbed your Milo, right, your cup of tea, right, can you give me a one to say that, yes, I'm ready, I'm ready to receive the information, right? Are you ready to, to, to go ahead? If yes, give me a one, everybody. Give me some energy here. <laughs> Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Yen. Oh, it's too fast. I can't see. Oh, oh, okay. My network, I think a little bit slow. Bell, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, guys. So I'm going to actually start my sharing. Uh, sit back, relax. Okay, I'm going to start. Yeah, okay. I, oh, I forgot to show you, right? All these are actually the past consumer webinars that I've conducted, right, since 2012. So these are some of the topics that I've gone through. Uh, and of course, I'm uh, one of the keynote speaker uh, in Promnex Consumer Seminars, like what I've did uh, now to all of you or uh, in my past projects. And in the landed property also, I'm one of the seminars keynote speakers talking about landed property market and of course, some of the landed uh, project and so on. Right, so these are some of the past uh, experience or records that uh, just to share with all of you or well, I'm not new uh, in the research I always like to do a lot of research and I share right to the consumers okay good so I'm going to start with district 15 where are district 15 so district 15 is actually here also it can be actually covering you know part of the uh, RCR which is actually rest of core central region right and then all the ways to the OCR, it means outside core central region. So this district is a little bit unique in a way that it has actually part of it is RCR and part of it is OCR, right? So if I'm going to enlarge the Singapore map, you will be able to see district 15 is actually somewhere around here, right? And it is actually has a Singapore biggest uh, East Coast Park and then of course our most beautiful seaside, right? So a very prominent one will be the Marine Parade and then the Marina area, or oh, this is actually the uh, Kalang River, the mouth of the Kalang River, and the other side will be actually Marina Bay, is Marina Bay, right? So this is District 15, and today our concentration will be more towards the RCR's part of the District 15, which is the one that is closest to the city area, right? So that is what I'm going to share with you because we have uh, more things that... Uh, it's going to happen, you know, in this part of the District 15. So I'm, I like to actually make use of this opportunity to maybe share some data with all of you so that you are able to make some informed decision moving forwards. Okay, so District 15 in the East Coast uh, is considered the most prestigious residential neighbourhood after Orchard Road, Pran, D9, 10 and 11, of course, including Sentosa and Marina Bay. Right. So after all those CCR area, District 15 is one of the most prime district. But it's not the whole district, you know. It's not the whole District 15. It's only certain part of the District 15. Right. So this is actually getting from the age property and which are the eight, which part of the District 15 they actually classified under the prime east, right? Which is very similar to the D9, 10, 11. Right, basically, it's actually here huh? from Tanjong Ru, Mayor, and then of course, all the way to Amber area. Then, of course, because of the higher labor expansion, and higher labor become part of the regional center that the UIA is trying to achieve. They are trying to decentralize our CBD area, right? So, higher labor is one of 
the area whereby they are trying to get, uh, bring all the activities from CBD into here. And because of that, right, the prime area of this uh, District 15 uh, has expanded all the way, like even covering all the landed property, you know, Crescent, Malpeton area, right? And then, of course, the Kachong area. All, all these become, I mean, we have seen the pricing or the popularity actually start to increase. So this is the area where by today we are going to cover, right? We are going to study, is there anything moving forwards that are able to help us to achieve a very good steady price growth in this particular area if we are coming into this area for investment, right? So tips from a resident of the East Coast. This is something very unique and uh, I think it's good to know, right? It's actually pulled out from the aspect dealing. The East give us that perfect balance. I like being nearest to the sea and not as close to the urban and concrete jungle. There are great schools and both local and now most international schools have campuses here. There are plenty of eatery and restaurants and with all sorts of multicultural cuisine too. Even better, there's a new MRT line close by. Right, so this is actually a real feedback from those residents who are staying in District 15. So District 15 is very, very different now, especially the East Coast, Kachong area. It's very unique in a way, right? No other area actually can assemble the same kind of feel uh, compared to District 15, right? So you can see actually we have this most uh, world-class, most beautiful sport hub. The world-class sport hub is, I mean, in Singapore, right? We have our biggest East Coast Park here, the seaside, right? All this uh, restaurant area, Marine Cove. And then we have Juchet, all the eatery area, Katong and East Coast Route, of course, our heritage correction and uh, the school, we have plenty of good school, branded school, secondary school or primary school are all in the Eastern area, right? World-class airport, right? Of course, the Street 15, Katong area is very close to the CBD. We are at the city fringe. So this is the area we buy. It's very, very different. And in terms of property performance, the trend that I'm going to show you, you will actually start to realize hey, this area really performed differently. If you, I don't know whether do you actually do a very deep study of District 15, um, the property performance or not. Or later, I'm going to show to you and you will start to realize it's so much different because District 15 has all these things that I call the X factors of District 15, whereby other districts like in CCR, you are not able to have all this enjoyment right in the way that this area is actually very ideal for work live and play right very very beautiful yeah so this is different this is a different district and i'm sure those people who stay in the east especially the katong area once you come in i think it's very difficult for you to get out of this area because it's very really so convenient uh, the vibe is different, and you know, you, I mean, even midnight, you want to eat something, I'm sure you can find something to eat, right? East Coast Park, the seasides, and you're so close to the uh, city area, you have the uh, East Coast Park to enjoy. So all these things are not able to get it elsewhere. So that's what I say, this is really a place for work, live, and play, right? That's why the demand, the popularity of District 15 is getting higher nowadays. Right, so District 15 is in the eastern part. So today, our topic, a lot of them are actually in the exit opportunity. So exit opportunity actually coupled with urban transformation. So I'm going to bring you into the master plan of 2019 and in the eastern region, what are you able to expect and how are you able to make use of all this to make a very informed decision, right? So of course, we have like eastern side from Pasiris, Paya Lebar, A Bay, Changi Region, Bayshore District, Kalang Riverside, Fowler Memorial. So today I'm going to touch more on this three area, which is actually closest to the city fringe, meaning you are all these are like closest to the RCR region of the district fifteen. So it might be able to make a greater impact in terms of the property price if we are going to study the district fifteen um, amber or Katong area. 
right? So we are going to go dive deeper into all these three area here, plus the Kalang River side area. Mm. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is actually this is something that I have did a study uh, in 2019 for uh, back then some of the consumers, some of the projects that I am uh, drive, I'm sharing, right? And you see, 2022 and 2023, back then, I classified this is an area of 99 years launches era, which I think this is very true because last year, I mean, this year itself, last year itself, mm -hmm. this year, we've really seen day 15, this particular prime East area. We are expecting 99 years project launching and he has actually set a new record, right? So this is happening. And next year, you, we will have actually the TL, which is the uh, Thompson East Coastline MRT is going to be in operation. So do you think you will provide another hype later? We can take a look. And then, of course, the Sport Hub, um, Kalang Alive and the Bayshore area, on 2025 later, I'm going to touch. And 2026, I classify as the Marina Bay Golf Course era. Right? So what's going to happen there? Later, I will share with you. And then 2027, we are talking about Founder Memoria. Or 2028, 20, 29, Oshin Kalang Riverside is going to start the transformation. And 2030, we have the Paya Lebar base, the Terminal 5 is going to start uh, in operation. But Terminal 5 is, is going to have a delay because of the COVID. Right? And 2040, we have the TL driver direct to Changi Terminal 5. So these are the things that, um, because I market project in other parts of the island, sometimes we don't even get so many things to actually uh, research about, to, to go into the research, right? But in East, it's different. I think East is really an area whereby oh, definitely you are going to see a lot of things happening, right? The potential is not maximized yet. That is something I just want to share with you, right? Because so many things are happening. Urban transformation, in fact, is one of the major catalysts to cause the property price to go up, right? So can you imagine Eastern Park got so many things oh, that you are able to write on, yeah? But you must understand what are they so that you are able to make a better informed decision and you know where to exit out, right? So stay with me. I'm going to actually go through them very quickly. Right before I go into other part of the sharing, right. First of all, of course, is actually Thompson East Coast Line. Thompson East Coast Line is going to be in operation from next year onwards. So this particular one, which is the last stage, stage four, is not ready, right. So stage four will be ready by uh, next year. Also, you can see actually East Coast people waited for thirty eight years before they have an MRT station, right? 38 years is not short, you know. Because Singapore has our first MRT line, which is the red line, right? 38 years ago. And until now, then East Coast people start to enjoy, right? But before they even get a MRT line, you can see actually the performance of the East Coast property in terms of the average per square foot against the national standards East Coast property actually already performed higher than a national standard without MRT station. So, guys, can you imagine once the MRT come in, right? And if you understand and how this M uh, TEL is going to travel across the East Coast, uh, all the stations, uh, then you will understand the potential of this line. Right, already the paper that back then in 2014, when they announced the station, uh, they really say that it will actually definitely bring the property price higher in the East Coast area, right? And because this MRT, look at it, you know, from Tanjong Katong, here we start from Tanjong Katong. Uh, you go Katong Park, Tanjong Ru, Fowler Memoria, and then you connect to Garden by the Bay, Marina South, and go into the Marina Bay 29 interchange. Uh, after they continue to travel into CBDs, Shenton Way, Maxwell, Outram, Park, Three Line MRT, all the way to Gate World, and then of course the Orchard Interchange. Right. So this in fact a very, very powerful MRT line because it travels through CBD and it go into our prime district nine. Right. And then of course, 
Data on, it will go direct to our Terminal 5. So this is one of the two lines eventually travel to Changi Airport, right? Uh, the rest of the line will be, the other line will be Cross Island Line. These are the two lines that go direct to Changi Airport next time. No other MRT line will travel to Changi Airport, right? So look at this. People who want to buy for investment, next time, once the Thomson East Coast Line is ready, you will expect like residents, I mean, those who work, uh, employee working in CBD area to take a, tr a short ride, you know, by train, and then they are able to stay in Katong, right? Definitely a lot of people will be coming down because it's very, very convenient and Katong is definitely a place where by deep work play, ma. you got the food, you got the, you got the uh, East Coast Park and so on. So I'm sure it was so much more fun compared to stay in the CBD and the rent in the CBD is so much higher. Right, so this is something that uh, it will definitely change uh, the profile of the residents in the eastern part, oh, which is District 15, uh, Katong area. Right, and uh, next thing I'm going to talk with all of you is actually Bayshore District because this is actually something that is huge, something is very big, and is actually happening uh, quite soon. Right, this is the plot of land or the jungle area in the Bayshore area, right? So Bayshore, and you can see actually there are two MRT stations in this big plot of land, right? Bayshore. So government actually built two, two MRT in a jungle. Oh, this is actually a jungle. So two MRT stations, they built in the jungle, right? So something that uh, uh, definitely is going to redevelop in this area. If not, how to put two MRT stations here, right? It becomes like elephant. Right, so what are they going to do? So they already announced they're going to build about 10, I mean, 12,500 public and private home here. Or 12,500 public and private home. I think that's a lot, right? And they, are, they call this a Bayshore district. Oh, and this is actually by the seaside. Oh, it's a very nice plot of uh, area. Oh, you see the whole area is very big. And they have actually cut out all the land already. Now, if you go to master plan, all this land are being, the parcel of land are being actually separated out. And they have some initial guide of what are they going to build here. For example, or they even cater one plot of land, which is grey in colour, what you see here, as a ITH, Integrated Transport Hub. Right, so integrated transport hub normally land will sell much higher based on our past experience. For example, fast service eight, right? I mean, they 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 are selling so much higher, but people are still buying, right? And this is something in trend now. ITH also you will have a future ITH in Bayshore area, and the rest of actually the plot now, especially the front plot, will be facing the sea, you know, and they're going to build an overhead bridge, or as a landscape bridge, huh? To bridge the residents, you know, from Bayshore to all the way to the East Coast Park. And not only residents, including all the uh, species, like those uh, uh, birds are, insects are, animals are, all this, you know, become, there will be a landscape bridge for them to actually go to the East Coast Park, right? So that is their plan. Oh, and not long ago, yeah, not long ago, uh, they already say they started work on the survey or to make sure they don't actually spoil the uh, environment over there and uh, make sure they protect all the uh, animals or birds or plants they are in the jungle there. Uh, so these are the things that they already start working and uh, definitely they have to uh, open, I mean they have to announce something right because our station is going to open in 2024 right and it cannot open two mrt station uh at the at the forest ma, right i think that is not definitely not justifiable <laughs> right no right so i'm i'm pretty sure uh not not far from now government will make some announcement on what are they going to do right maybe they'll push out the first land or maybe they'll start with the hdb bto application and so on Right, but anyway, uh, we will put that inside. But one thing for sure, they have to build housing there. Right, that is very, very sure. Right, and then of course, 
I want to actually bring attention to this particular project in Seagrub area, which is very close to Bayshore. This project is called Seaside Residences, right? And Seaside Residences is having the same kind of facing, right, as compared to Bayshore project. Uh. They are all facing, of course, along the ECP, and they have a very good frontage facing the sea. Right, they have a very good frontage facing the sea, and seaside residences actually perform very well. You can see the pricing average done is 2035. 2035, and highest is actually achieved 2667 per square foot. And this is actually your OCR location, right? And of course, they are not freehold, they are 99 years. And imagine 99 years actually achieved 2600 over dollar per square foot at seaside, you know, and not even like so close to the city area right because it's considered the outskirt that's why it's classified under ocr right and of course i want to actually use a map to show you uh, where is actually seaside residences it, it is somewhere around here if you look at my cursor right and then of course the bayshore is here also in fact they are quite close they are quite close so when developer next time bid for bayshore will they use seaside as an example Right, I'm sure they will study how much seaside buyer are willing to pay. Then they will work out the price that they're going to bid for the Bayshore land. <laughs> but seaside achieved very good results. So definitely that will help Bayshore land price to be high as well. Right, It cannot be too low. And uh, of course, if that happened, they are all in the OCR region. So if OCR 99 years in the future, near future, are going to sell or launch at a very high price, right? What happened to all this freehold property at the Katong area, right? So you have to start to imagine, you know, well, we are going to actually use something that is going to happen. And you know it will happen at a higher price. Right? And now, if I have a chance, to get a freehold, for example, to get a freehold, sitting at a better location compared to the future 99 years project, will I be able to benefit from this urban transformation trend or not? Well, this is actually one of the very important questions that I want you all to start thinking, right? Because if you can see the opportunity, then I'm, I'll be very happy for you because you will be able to make a very good decision. Right, so Asia freehold nearest to the city center, and you are able to pick it up maybe cheaper than the 99 years. Right, so there's something I want to share with you about how Bayshore is going to affect the land price and how the freehold in the Katong area is going to benefit from all this transformation. Right, hey, good. Then I'm going to bring you all the way to this area called Marina Bay Golf Course. Now, this government already announced they're going to phase out. They're going to phase out this in um, 2024. Right? This is actually a very, very good location. It has a super good view, right? Oh, and where is Marina Bay Golf Course? It's actually here by the... Kalang Riverside. Oh, and you are overlooking at the Garden by the Bay, Singapore Friars, right? And Tanjong Ru Estate is here. All right, so this is Marina Bay Golf Course. It occupied a huge plot of land. Right. So why government want to stop all this? Because the land is actually a prime land. And government actually insert one MRT station called Fowler Memorial MRT Station. Along the Thompson East Coast line, well, this was actually added in 2019, right? That was actually when they already announced all the state, all the station in the Thompson East Coast line in 2015. They announced already after 2019, they insert one more station, and they called this station Founder Memorial, right? So why they insert one station here? Because they have decided to build Founder Memorial in this area. Right overlooking at the garden by the bay or and facing the Kalang River here. 
right? So this is in fact a very, very nice uh, plot of land and you have a very nice scenery, right? Very beautiful uh, scene, uh, view, uh, overlooking at the Garden by the Bay and of course the Singapore Friars as well. And this is a place whereby they decided to put Founder Memorial site, yeah? And that is the reason why last minute they put this MRT. And this area in the future is going to turn into a tourist attractions for sure, right? And the next question I'm going to ask you, just because of the Fauna Memorial site, is it justifiable to book an MRT station? Or? Guys, can you answer me? <laughs> is it justified or not? If this is not justified, you put a tree. Is it justified to put an MRT station just because of Fauna Memorial? Pauline, thank you. We put a tree. Joanne, thank you. Alvin, everybody say not justified. Han, thank you. Joanna Chua, thank you very much. Residential next time. Wow, good. You start to understand really how. Yeah. Uh, in earlier, you know, the station, they will not want to open early because there's no ridership, right? So they will actually only open in tandem with the uh, opening of the Founder Memorial Building, which is actually 2027, then it will be ready, 2027, right? So because of this, that's why they had to wait for the golf course to go out. Then they start to maybe sell land to build condominiums so they are able to increase the ridership when 2027, they open the MRT station, right? So if 2027 open MRT station, then they cannot wait until 2027 before they do announcement on the land sales. It could be earlier, right? So 2024, they move out. And if 2027, the station is going to open, maybe 2025 is actually a good time for them to settle down and they can start to make some announcement right so my next question very important question if there's a gls here do you think the price is going to be cheap or no any one of you is the price going to be cheap yes or no oh no i join i think you are right man because this is a prime prime land right you are looking at the sea you are looking at the river you are looking at the marina bay garden by the bay you are looking at the singapore flyers right? so how can it be cheap and these are all 99 years land eh? so if 99 years land and they are not going to sell cheap right so in the future meaning the 99 years land is going to be more expensive and now you have a chance to buy a freehold land which is so much lower than the future 99 years land do you want to take opportunity or not Right, maybe it's actually worth for you or the buyers or the consumers in the room here. You might want to think, right, which is actually a better um, move for you. Which one actually carry better weight or which one is a safer bet for you, right? Then before you make a decision, moving forwards. Yeah. Hey, good. Then after that, I'm going to bring you to the Sport Hub. Huh? So Sport Hub also, they have a plan. By 2025, they are going to, this is a project called Kalan Alive, right? So a lot of things are going to build here and I have started to see, they already start to build this world-class tennis center. This is really very beautiful, right? So our Sport Hub is one of the really very nice world-class Sport Hub. Right? So now they are doing the expansion. Oh, they are building this thing already now. Right, and next time you can see on oh, this is something that I can really can look. I, I hope they are uh, they will start building. I look forward to this barrel uh dome. This is something that all the cyclists or oh, for bicycle and uh, they will really love it uh, to do a tournament inside this dome here. 
<laughs> and Kalang Football Club, they already start building as well. And next time, this is really a lifestyle area, you know. And mentioning, I think a lot of youngster executive is going to move into the east, east side you know, because of all this, right? Elsewhere, you don't have. If I stay here, I get to enjoy all these facilities and I have the natural park connector, the East Coast Park, Seaside are all be, all around me, you know. So for me, I also travel from, I stay in the East. I also travel, you know, in the park connector, right? We go from the East Coast Park all the way to the Marina Center, Marina Bay. And before that, we after that, we turn back. This is pretty a very nice uh, spot for cycling. And yeah, youngster will look forward. Young executive will really love and expectate would definitely love this. And all these are able to help in terms of the rental price as well, right? So this is something we are looking forward. And Kalang Riverside, after that, right? After you know that the Sport Hub is going to transform, what we call this Kalang Alive, across the Kalang Highway, Nico Highway. What we, we have this empty plot of land here. This is actually purple color, white color, and dark blue color. So you look at the legend here. Purple color is what? Hotel, right? So this next time there is along the Kalang River on the river side, you will actually expect a lot of six-star hotel. Uh. Six-star hotel, right? So why they put so many hotels here? Uh, later I'll explain to you. Because of this white side here. White side. Huh? You see how many plot of white side land? I think this is one of the most white side land available in Singapore clustered together. One, right? And what so big deal about white side land? White side land meaning they are able to build what great A office. They are able to build great A office. No? So next time here, you will see a lot of offices, which is great A. And great A office more, most likely will also invite or attract a lot of people from overseas travel in for business meeting, that kind of thing. And they will actually require what? Hotel, right? That's the reason why you, they have planned a lot of hotel plot land here. And those people who come for sport next time, Right, if we have any uh, occasion uh, or we actually host any of the sport, then maybe they are able to make use of all this hotel as well. <laughs> and white side also are able to build housing. Also, it's a very flexible land whereby they are able to build a uh, great A office, service apartment, uh, uh, mm -hmm. residential, right? And of course, they are able to build shopping mall. So all this is going to happen in the current riverside, which is just across our sport hub. Oh, and the dark blue color is actually meant for commercial, right? So meaning here already, you can see so many dark blue color plot here, you know? So next time you will see a lot of big shopping mall in this area, right? So this area really will turn into a really, a very unique place whereby you see a lot of high-end condominium maybe are able to found in this locality, right? And, and, this is the artist impression. So this picture was attracted from the URA website. Also, you can see next time here, we'll have a lot of like, by the side, we'll have river, I mean the uh, hotel, right? And all these are service, I mean the great A office, the condominium and so on, it will be clustered around here. And then we will have the shopping mall, right? And our Kalang MRT station is here, right? Of course, across the route, we will see this uh, Kampung Bugis. Well, Kampung Bugis is another area whereby they have planned to have, they have planned to build this. Huh? Well, it's another white side area I can see actually. Well, they changed the master plan from 2014, 2019, become a white side. So next time here, we'll have a lot of condominium. How many? 4,000 units they intend to build here uh, over this plot of land. You will have 4,000 units. right? So all these are very close to the city area. And they are all prime land, right? And how many in the next 20 years they are able to put 100,000 units oh, into this stretch of two kilometer Kalang River? You can see 100,000 houses come, I mean, unit coming up, right? Over the next 20 years, all these are attracted from URA, right? So the thing is, you can ask uh, whether all this will help in your property price or not, I'm sure yes, because property analysts already say the redevelopment will boost property price in this area and definitely they are able to set to be able to achieve long-term capital appreciation too due to the prime location and the tremendous effort to develop the locality. Right, so if you are able to see this far enough, this is one of the long-term plans, right? 
property near this area definitely is going to uh, benefit from all this future launch because all these 100,000 units that they are able to put, right? They are all 99 years project. So what happened to those freehold? Oh, I give it to you to think about. Is it worthwhile for you to get a freehold? Because your neighbor next time is going to sell 99 years at a very high price. Right? So if you are able to see far enough, then you will understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so Paya Lebar is one area where our government is trying to decentralize our commercial uh, activities. Yeah, and Paya Lebar is already started to transform. Right, this is very close to CBD. That's the reason why they put at Paya Lebar. Right, and if all this happen, uh, how much developer have to pay? You know, for the future land cost. And are they freehold or ninety nine years land? Right, and will this drive the surrounding property price up, especially if you are the freehold, right? So think about it: whether all this transformation is going to help you, especially the freehold property, right? Okay, good. So urban transformation has the impact in terms of property price. This one already proven. For example, Marina Bay transformation in the past from nineteen ninety nine to now. 2013, not till now, to 2013, just a short, like 10 over years, the property mm -hmm. has gone up 200%, right? And Beach Road, Ophia and Locho Corridor has also gone up by 200, more than 200%. So this is the impact of the urban transformation. And it's one of the biggest catalysts to see the property price mm -hmm. drive, driven, uh, driving up, right? So guys, I hope this short brief on the what's going to happen in the eastern part will give you some idea of what are the things, what are the best things that you're supposed to look out for, or where are all the safe bets. Right. So I leave it to you. Oh, then Paya Leba is already transformed. Oh, this is already all built up. Landis actually built up all this, and you can see here already have 10,000 workers you know, can house into the great A office. Eh? Right, so this is one area outside CBD is you see Great A office, right? And it's very, very close to Tanjong Katong as well. And after that, Landis start to acquire uh, and they partner with Certis head to, to actually redevelop their headquarters. So they're going to increase the Great A office space by another 220,000 square feet. 220,000 square feet of Great A office is going to be seen at Paya Leba Center. Right, so these are all your tenant. More, pe more people is going to work here, and uh, they are great A office. So their standard, the, the the employee standard, definitely is going to be different from any other type of office. Also, this is already under construction at the PL Q area, right? And of course, HDB also announced they are very old Tanjong Katong complex. Well, they are going to actually do some renovation, phase D reconstruction. So this will be the future looks of this particular complex. Well, again, it will form another hangout, good hangout area after they have transformed. I'm, I really look forward to this. And this is going on the landlord is actually HDB, right? Hey, then Paya Leba ABS is going to move out in 2030. This is something everybody know, right? And why I want to bring up Paya Leba Air Base? Because once Air Base go out, uh, this area, because this Paya Leba, our Paya Leba area is actually an aircraft landing path. So right now, the building height is being controlled. And imagine if they say we start to move out the Air Base and uh, our building might be able to increase the height. Because 3.5 port ratio are able to go very tall. We are able to build actually 36 story, more than 36 story. But right now, the building there is only below 20 story. Right. Mm. So once the air base actually go out, then all these free, these are all empty land. Uh, the yellow one is under reserve. Right. A lot of land actually around PLQ area. So all this blue color is actually the mall, a commercial area. They said this area got a lot of malls because we have a lot of commercial land here. And some of the older project might go on block after that. Right. So you will get, uh, you will give out space for developer to build new condo. Right, if the building are able to go up high, 
Yeah, and that will give opportunity to the surrounding property, right? So this is the Paya Lebar area. And Tanjong Kachong is very close to the Paya Lebar area, right? So this is all District 15. And today, my focus will be around this area, right? Because you see mm -hmm. the transformation, urban transformation, if you are going to take advantage, then this is one area where I think you cannot ignore, right? Because of its characteristic and because it's very close to the city centre and because it's very close to all the urban transformation spots, right? That's why we want to concentrate, maybe do a bit of study here, right? So I hope this is something that I am looking into. Tanjong Katong area, this area, right? and this area are something that we should maybe do a study because this is actually a very unique area whereby it consists a lot of freehold property, right? If you are looking at Tanjong Ru area, then majority of them are all 99 years. Right, so but I want to study actually a freehold property in this particular area. You know, whether how is the performance, whether is it worthwhile for you, right, to, to pay attention now because you understand in the future all the 99 years project upcoming is going to be very, very costly. Right, so is it worthwhile for you to actually consider a freehold property before those 99 years become expensive? <laughs> and I'm sure you'll start to benefit from it after if 99 years become expensive. So we are going to study this area. So I'm going to bring you into this table whereby I actually go into research, but I summarize for you. If not, then it's going to be too long. right? So I do a summary for you to make you see from year 2000, year 2000, Oh, we have the Naman View, which is a 99 years project by Far East, started to launch at $739 per square foot. Right. Then I say the green color is actually the 99 years. Uh, oh. Yeah, I say, of course, beside Naman View, uh, which is the same location, we have Butterworth 8, which is by Keppel Land Freehold, launching at $861 per square foot. Then after 2002, this is called Diazu. This is actually one project, which is, I think, one of a very unique project. It's 99 years, but it's, the performance, performance is very strong. Well, Code Diazu is actually seated beside Parkway Parade, and you are facing the sea, right? And they are very lucky because they get the uh, Marine Parade MRT station in front of the Parkway mm -hmm. Parade, whereby it's very close to Code Diazu also. Right, so all these actually are the attributes they push this 99 years project to perform very well over the years. Right, they started from $599 per square foot in 2002. Right, then after that, we have the Sea View condominium, which is a freehold, and this is actually one of the biggest land, freehold land in the Katong area launched in 2005 at $771 per square foot. Right. Then after Far East on block, the uh, Amber, um, Amber, what you call it? Uh, well, I can't remember the, the mm -hmm. HUDC name now. But then they on block the HUDC. Uh, after that, they push out the project at Silver Sea. This is 99 years, right? And you can see actually the jump uh, from Cote d'Azu to here, which is only a five years, we become $1,293 per square foot. Right, so which is quite a big jump. Then after 2008, we see St. Patrick Residences Freehold launch at $968, followed by the Shaw, which is also by far east, 103 years, become 1105. Yeah, then after along the way, we will have Cuesta, Katong Regency, Amber 45, Mayor Mansion. All these are freehold launches. And you can see actually the price start from 1333 went up to 1668-2364 and Mayor mentioned we have the average price of 2779. So what does all this actually tell us? Well, we don't have actually a lot of 99 years launching last time in the East Coast area. Majority of them are all freehold, right? So I only put like a few to just represent, but of course, it, we have more, much more than this freehold launch during back then, right? But I got no time to go through one by one. Mm. Oh, but just to give you have a feel of how the price are being traveled up in all these last 20 years, right? 
So 99 years, we don't have a lot. Actually, uh, we only have like GLS, uh, Naman View, Code Diazu, and don't have. We only have two GLS, no? Naman View, Code Diazu, and uh, Tembusu Grand, right? These are the three GLS in this area, right? Seaside Residences is in OCR, so it's further away, so we are not going to touch that for tonight. Yeah, the rest, like Silver Sea is on block from the HUDC, right? And then, of course, the Shaw Residences is on block from the Rose Garden, which was originally a freehold land, right? After they push out as 103. Yeah, but the thing is actually, I want to let you see the land cost has increased by so much and come to the lift at MB, which Bukit Sampawang on block Katong Park, right? And uh, they pushed out. Average 2411. In Tambusu Grand, we just launched not long ago. It was a GLS, right? The price becomes 2475. So you can see from 739, blah, 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 all the way, it has reached 2475. This is how fast the land cost or the, I mean, the, the sorry, not the land cost, the uh, average per square foot when launch, uh, this is the launching price, has actually occurred. Or likewise for the freehold. Or, and the next question here is, you know, freehold in 2023, how much you will expect the price to be, right? Since may I mentioned already done at average 2779. Or how about next year, 2024? What, what do you foresee the 99 years and the freehold in this particular district, Tatong area, is going to launch or to sell? Right, so this is something whereby I think it's not difficult to predict because we have data, we have evidence to share with all of you tonight. Right, so there, this is the performance in the different projects that I shared with you. Uh, Nanman View is a 99 years over the years from launch actually has increased by 76%, right? But the Freehold Butterworth 8 has increased by this much. Also, if we are going to put them into 2005 so that we have a equal uh, comparison now uh, you can see the butterworth it actually increased by 183 93 percent you know, versus the 124 percent Naman view right so this is something that is happening and uh between the freehold and the 99 years co-relationship even though they i mean they are in the same location right and joining the same amenities and so on right and of course the uh Code Diazu, this is one project whereby I told you it's really very unique and it has performed very well, 166, 166% you know, because of the very unique characteristic and the location, right? Okay, and the Sea View, the biggest land in Katong, 612 units, or oh, very good performance, 194%, 6.18% a year increment, right? So freehold big land actually are very De having a good demand, that's why you can see actually the price are going up very fast. And uh, Silver Sea, which is the 99 years, has a 2.68% per year increment since launch. Right? And of course, we have this, the Shaw Residences or another, this whole project, we have 3.92% per mm -hmm. year since launch performance. Right? Then if I'm going to like put all the big project together, one Amber, Deesta, the Sea View, Headcourt. These are actually one, four of the very big projects in this Katong area. You can see their performance actually increased from 5.83 to 6.76% 6 per year, right? which is a very, very impressive uh, result because uh, this is actually yearly increment. So if you are buying something you want to hold or you want to plan for a legacy, in fact, a big freehold land is actually very appropriate for you to consider Based on all the trends that I've shown you, I think uh, the big freehold land are in demand and it's very popular among all the D15 buyers, right? And because freehold is also very, very limited, or well, in the whole of Singapore, especially near MRT, only 13%, you know. So today, if you are able to get a freehold land, which is very close to MRT, I'm sure you will stand a better chance because of the very limited stock in Singapore. Right, Singapore don't sell freehold land. The government don't give out freehold land after 1960 something or no more. Right, so every land they sell are 99. So freehold are all from the on block. Right, developer need to buy from the resale owner, and that's something actually quite rare. 
uh, and especially near MRT is even more rare. Yeah, so this is the data whereby we get the source from the age property. I hope it served a little bit on your, uh, I mean, give you a bit, a bit of understanding on whether should you go for freehold or not, <laughs> especially if you've got MRT quite nearby. And I also actually did a study of the resale, right? CCR, which is the core central region resale, uh, average PSF on the freehold property has actually increased 84% percent from year 2009 to 2023 right compared to d15 resale property mm. in fact d15 actually increased much mm. higher as compared to the core central average per square foot increment right we have a 8.7 percent a year increment for d15 versus the ccr Right, and uh, most likely it's due to the X factor of the District 15. Now. So that's why everybody says District 15 is in fact a prime district after 1911, whereby I think the property performance is really very strong in this area. And D11, 99 years, and D11 freehold, or I break them into five years. So just to let you see, uh, in five years' time, whether a uh, property, 99 years property in District 11, uh, versus the freehold, uh, how is their co-relationship, right? So in District 11, 99 years perform better than the freehold if we break them down into the first five years performance after launch. Or then the next 10 years, I mean, in the first 10 years performance, they are about the same, freehold and 99, right? But on the 15 years, the 99 start to lose out, the freehold start to catch up. That is actually happening in District 11, right? How about District 10? On well, District 10, 99 years, 33% in the first five years versus freehold. It's about there, about the same. Well, but the freehold actually on the 10 years start to lead the 99 years in District 10. And it went even further on the 15 years gap since launch. So District 10 owner also prefer, a lot of them prefer freehold, right? That's why you see actually the freehold is doing so much higher as compared to the 99 years in District 10. Or maybe, maybe the area also, a lot of the property are freehold. Maybe there's a cost. And of course, I also study a District 9, oh, 99 and freehold. Five years versus five years, about the same. The next five years, which is a 10 years period freehold start to overtake the diesel. But on the 15 years, District 9 actually 99 years performed better than the freehold. So it's quite volatile if you see from here, D9, maybe a lot of them are all foreigners, investors, right? That's why you see a lot of fluctuation. So this area normally are uh, yeah, a lot of investor, speculator in the past, right? <laughs> Yeah, so this is something happening uh, in, in the District 9. But if I'm going to do the same analysis for District 15, right? This is something that I found. The data I pulled from URA, right? So in the first five years, District 15 freehold performing much better than 99 years, 60% versus 37%, right? So if you are going to study the 10 years period Again, freehold in District 15 also performed much better than 99 years. Or likewise, for the 15 years, 117% versus 77%. Right, so this is actually the trend. I'm talking about the average resale PSF. Because when we buy a new project, after that, we will become a resale market. Right, so to study whether you know your investment is good or not, we want to understand you know the performance of the resale market in terms of the freehold in ninety nine. How are they actually fair? Right, so this is actually the numbers as an average that I am getting from URA data. Right, so whether you are buying a property for to hold for five years or to hold for ten years or to hold for fifteen years or to hold forever, right? It looks like in this fifteen is quite unique freehold always perform much better as compared to the 99 years, right? So this is what I'm trying to actually show you in terms of the data, in terms of the trend, right? So I hope you get some uh, ideas from here. And this data actually serve you some of the guideline when you are going to make a decision, right? Okay.
And that is actually one of the reasons why maybe Far East, when they launched the Shaw, they actually launched as one zero three years, right? But in fact, this particular plot of land is actually freehold. They are able to sell it freehold to actually sell maybe another 20% more. But end of the day, they decided to sell as 103. Why? Right. So I also curious. I read on to the newspaper articles and they say, well, Far East cannot realize the full potential of the site now. But retaining the freehold title, it will have the chance to participate eventually. Meaning what? There's a few things that we can see from here. First thing is actually Katong has never actually reached the full potential yet. Right. A lot of things still is going to happen. And we are very close to the city center marina area. So this is an area whereby you will see huge transformation too. Right. And because of this, Far East, they don't want to give out as a freehold title to, for their project, you know, especially this is quite a big plot of land. We are talking about almost 190,000 square feet of land, the shore residences, right? So Far East also understand you want to find a freehold big plot of land in Katong is very, very rare by keeping it, right? I am able, right, to pass the benefits to the future generation. So you see, Far East are doing what we call legacy planning. They are doing legacy planning, right? And they want to make sure they pass something good to their next, next generation, right? By study, by understanding this, one of the good things in D15, Katong area, is actually big plot of land. That's why they want to keep it, right? So if you are able to find a project, big plot of land, Selling the best is actually selling at 99 years pricing. I think that is actually one of the no brainer, right? You can really use it to plan your legacy, you can pass it down to your next generation because those property you will have a huge hidden value behind it. And I'm sure in years to come, you will see a great potential like what Fire is actually experienced here. That's why they give up the shore as a 103 years this hole. Right, so we are learning for all the big boys, ah, right. So freehold is good for legacy planning, that's for sure. And of course, this story, I think every one of you actually uh, come across. So if you are holding on to the ninety nine years, and uh, it's already confirmed, once the lease come to the end, you will get single zero cent back, right. So all these people actually have to return the land to the, uh, to the SLA, which is the state land. Right, for the Le Shaw residences, uh, people will have to return the land back to Far East when the lease use up. Right? So this is how it is going to work, right? And the driving force in D15, why you know everybody start to see the District 15 price keep going up and people uh, are so confident about this area. You know, one of the things is actually you start to see infrastructure start to come in. Oh, just now I already show you like MRT is one of them and they're going to plan a lot of like new town, new GLS, uh, new things is going to put into District 15, right? So that caused the price to go up and we are very close to the CBD area. That's also another factor because right now if our MRT are traveling to CBD in just three or four stations, definitely is going to be a benefit for those people who are owning a D15. Uh, housing and because of urban transformation that I've gone through with all of you, right? So that really put people in a very good confidence. And D15 strategic location, we are so close, right? D15 X factors, on block prices, and so on, right? So on block prices is another factor that I want to touch very quickly because we have seen on block cycle in 2005 or 2010, and of course 2017. So these are the three main on block cycle so far happening in Singapore. And of course, District 15 is one of the very popular locations for developer. And because of this, right, they prefer a freehold property, freehold property, freehold land. This is what developer actually want. So they always go for freehold and they are willing to pay a good price for the owner. And that actually keep pushing the price up. Like what this Amber Park, uh, this CDL, uh, they have to even pay 18% above the reserve price. 18% above the reserve price. Now, that's actually a lot of money, right? But 
in order to get a big land, uh, they have to do that, no choice. But are they confident to sell after they pay a premium? Uh, that's actually an, a good question that we have to think about. right? They are confident with a big plot of land. That's why they are willing to pay a premium to the owner. right? Because it's very rare to get such a site here. And big site here, if you know how developers are bidding, uh, you know already, these are all the good value behind 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 the big plot of land in Katong area, uh, right? And of course, when they launched, you see, this is actually one of the strongest launch back then in 2019, right? Because it's freehold, because it's big plot of land, even though they are setting another record when launched, right? Everybody still buy and they have moved 100 over units, right? Which is 115 of the 150 units at the 2,400 over dollar per square foot. Yeah, so that is the power of having a big freehold land. And another on block happening not long ago, which is by UOL, Mayor Park on block, right? And they have paid a very high land cost of 1668 per square foot per pot ratio. So in the future, I think they are going to sell at least 3,000 or close to 3,000. Or if not, some of the unit will be above 3,000, right? And it's not very far from now. Next year, maybe they will launch this project. So next year, you will expect this as thin, mayor area. You will start to see this kind of PSF coming out on the new launch, right? So this is real and it's going to happen. And in the from 2011 to 2023, we have, we have seen the on-block price, the land cost has increased by $500 per square foot over the years. Right, so Tiamsil is here, 1488, and Mayor Park is 1668. Right, moving forward, more GLAs will be seen in D15 and 16. Like what I have explained to you, all the urban transformation government will start to push out GLS, right? And all this price is going to be high because of the project launching price that you have seen today, right? And that will set a benchmark for developers to bid for those land, right? And our stock inventory in the whole of Singapore is running very, very low. You can see RCR only left with 3,000 over units. And that explains why you know, the property price continue to climb. So in the Q1 of 2023, we have seen a 3.2% increase, right? which is still a very, very healthy market in Singapore. And because of that, the freehold, right, which is very, very limited in supply, Right, uh, you can see the price right now is 2549. On the gap between a 99 years and the freehold are in fact very close, or some of them are even higher. Right. Uh, this is the trend that uh the the the, what call it, the research that PropNex HD department has done on just to show you 99 years this whole right now, the price has moved very close to the freehold price, right, in the RCR region, well, which is where Katong is seated, right? So this is a very important information and a message that I want you to register in your brain, right? RCR is, freehold is, is actually cheaper. 99 years is more expensive, right? So to do a summary of what I have just Cover is going to be very quick. D15 has more freehold property and D15 receive freehold perform better than 99. D15 receive freehold perform better than CCR property. D15 big freehold land property perform two times better than the 99 or the small property. Right, D15 future freehold launches are getting more expensive as what you can see from the mayor part on block. Right. And of course, D15 property will benefit from the urban transformation if you plan it correctly. So these are the things that the information that I've shared with all of you. So I hope right now you have a bit of understanding what's going to happen here. Right. And RCR, we hope price gap is getting close to 99 years. Yeah. So for now, or well, if you have a chance to get a freehold property, close to 99 years, which one will you choose? Come, maybe we do a bit of exercise. Well, I keep talking also. <laughs> Hello. If you have a chance to buy a freehold land, 
Hey, same price or cheaper than 99 day. Which one will you want to go for in the district 15 right now? After you understand what's going to happen here. <laughs> right, guys, thank you very much. I just want to take a sip of water. Thank you for all of you are still here with me, right? It takes a little bit longer, but I think, I hope all this information are able to help you to make a better decision moving forward. See, uh, everybody say freehold. All of you are able to see from the from the chart, right? So this is no brainer to me. If can get freehold, same price or even like closest to ninety nine. Why not? Because I'm very sure here. I really share with you here in District Fifteen. Upcoming you will have a lot of ninety nine years GLS, and they're going to sell actually more expensive than what you paid for a freehold today, based on the trend that I've shown you. Right, definitely there's no brain. I mean, it's no brainer to go for freehold if today I can get something close to 99 years price. Right. So this is something that I'm gonna share with all of you. Right. These are all the supply in the district 15 Katong area for this year, for next year. Right. We have the Daman, we have Tambusu, we have the Prop 2 Tambusu Continuum Freehold. Right. Out of all these four plots, Tambu. I mean, the continuum is the only freehold here. The rest are all 99 years, right? We are all quite close to one another, but I'm not saying that the 99 year project cannot buy, don't get me wrong, but I'm basing on data, right? Today, if you have a slight window of opportunity, if you are able to get a freehold, which is cheaper, or if not, slight different from the 99 years, will you want to take the, the uh, action now, you know? Well, before we even look at all other 99 years, right? So freehold only one, 24%. The rest are all 99 years. And in the future, there will be more 99 years coming up more expensive than what you're going to buy for freehold today, right? And this is one uh, opportunity that I'm going to introduce to all of you, right? This is actually one of the biggest freehold launch in Singapore. We call this the continuum, right? And it's by developer Hoi Hap. Oh, um, this is really a huge project. You can see 269,000 square feet of land consists of 816 units. Oh, you have two full basement car parks. Everyone will have a car park lots, one-to-one -one ratio, right? So this is unique. And this area to dig basement car park, the construction cost is very high. Because in the older day, this is actually very near to the seaside. And underneath the soil, they are all marine. Play, right so you need additional precaution to build basement right that's why some developers they don't even want to give basement and uh, because the cost is very high but for here freehold luxury project need to come with a basement car park and we are not having one but two basement car park right so and uh, 816 units total six towers uh. so this will be the whole site for this particular project, which is in Tan along Tanjong Katong Road, Tanjong Katong Road, right? Head Road is on this side. And if you go up further, it will be the will be the uh, Paya Leba Quarter, right? So this is at Tanjong Katong area. And look at this huge plot of land. Well, one, one land equivalent to all so many project land. Uh. So you can just imagine how big is this plot of land. And it has a very unique characteristic of a uh, Tiamsil Avenue being actually passing by this project, right? So if you look at the location, Tiamsil Avenue is here and Paya Leba uh, MRT is here, right? So this project location, I think is one of the best uh, convenient area because why? Because we are actually quite near to three MRT station. One circle line, is west line. And then of course we have the upcoming Thompson East Coast line. If you don't want to walk down, uh, it is actually uh, about uh, quite a distance to walk, but you can take a direct bus. I think uh, two, three bus stop, you'll reach the MRT station. Or if not, the nearest MRT that you are able to walk will be the Dakota MRT station. Uh, on Google, actually show nine minutes, but I think we tried personally actually walk there. It's about seven minutes plus. Right, so beside MRT, we also have web market, but it's very close to here. So when we actually market a lot of project last time in the mayor and the Amber area, a lot of buyers actually say there's no web market. Want to buy something, want to eat something, also must drive out, right? But now if you come to this uh, Tiamsil site, then you don't have to worry because the web market is there. You're very close to a lot of Italy area, right? 
And uh, you're also very close to all the shopping malls. You've got about six to seven uh, malls nearby Tiam Siu Avenue. <laughs> right, Paya Leba Mall is one of them. And you have a lot of great A office here, 10,000 employees working in this area. So next time you want to buy even for investment, people can walk to their workplace, right? And this project is unique, right? And of course, we have the best primary school in this region called Guanghua, Gonghua School, right? And then of course, another very popular one will be the Tanjong Katong Primary School and followed by the Hit Girl School. So all these three schools are within one kilometer to Tiam Siu Avenue, right? Whichever school you want to go, you have more opportunity. Right, and on top of that, East Coast Park Seaside is nearby. This is I call the X factors of District Fifteen. Right, look at the two plot of land. Very nice, beautiful, and uh, it's very huge, very very big. Actually, I want to share a secret with all of you, right? Because this is an important secret whereby I think uh sometimes you might overlook. Initial plan for this developer is actually to launch two condominium here because the plot of land is big enough to sustain by itself one project, right? This is 408 units. So initial plan is to launch two different condo, right? So if they launch two different condo, I want to ask all of you a question. If you stay at the, this is called the north, north side, huh? If you stay here, are you able to walk to the southern side to enjoy their facilities or not? Are you able to or not? <laughs> are you still in the chat group? <laughs> not sure. <laughs> this is something uh, I have shared with some of the buyer where I talked to at the show fair because this project already uh, started preview, right? So a lot of buyers actually say, well, of course cannot. La. Yeah. So right now, because this Hoi Hat ma, always love to give value to the buyer, they always actually enhance value. They add value to the purchaser of their projects. So end of the day, they come out with this idea, they decided to combine it into one project eh? and they interconnected with this bridge here. Right. So today, if you are the owner of the Northern Prop, because it's one same project, you are able to enjoy two condos facilities, right? So this is really a great value for you as an owner or even as an investor. If you want to rent out this property, definitely people are able to pay a higher rent because they are able to enjoy both sides of the facilities. And both sides of the facility actually come in different enjoyment, different skill, different format, right? So that is the beauty part. Yeah, so to understand more, definitely I want all of you to go down to the show flat. Just get the PropNex agent who invited you here, right? To, to go down to the show flat to experience yourself. It's a very beautiful project. And MRT I already covered. So uh, driver also very convenient. Uh, I think all of you know. So these are some of the artist impression of the project. It's really a very beautiful project. You see the bridge here? You are overlooking at the leg pool. Right, a 50 meter lead pool in a irregular ship, uh, uh, surrounded with a lot of landscaping plant. That's why they call this lake pool L A K E. Right, and this is actually our modern clubhouse whereby the bridge uh, started uh, connected to on the southern plot of the project. Right, and then of course our function room on the south plot, oh, and then the karaoke room. Very, very beautiful, right? And of course, this is something that I really fall in love. This is a conserved bungalow. Because I'm a landed agent, I'm a landed specialist, I'm a landed trainer. I love to see landed property. And this conserved uh, bungalow, really, actually, they did a very good job and they, they really keep the courtyard in front. Well, it formed a very, very beautiful uh, area uh, in the whole project. And, especially when pedestrians actually walk across Tamsil Avenue, they are able to see this very beautiful conserved bungalow. And this one will form as a clubhouse for the northern plot. And inside you have a big function room, foyer area. Of course, it comes with a library as well, right? This is actually the library. Yeah, and the courtyard 
I mean, the, the foyer area, the dining area, you can actually bring in your Haiti Lao, uh, Huo Guo, and you can enjoy with your whole family here, right? Very, very uh, thoughtful of the developer, right? So beside the ground floor facilities, uh, this project also have a sky terrace that you should go and take a look because we have a lot of facilities up there, like sky gym, or like the gym, like the sky uh, bar, uh, uh, the Sky Gym on the, the other part, and of course, we have the Sky Club, whereby you can invite your personal chef to come in to have a fine dining with your VIP customer and so on. <laughs> so it's really very, very uh, 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 thoughtful and uh, definitely developer give you a lot of built-in area whereby they have to pay tax to the government, right? They pay DC for all this built-in area. So even though we are on the roof terrace, everything are all come with a built-in area right so they never shortchange the buyer they pay the dc and they give the best to the buyer so we have plenty of gfa counter area especially we have even an icon room beside a barbecue area for you to enjoy the icon after a very hot barbecue you know right so this is something so go down go now please go down you have to go down to the show flat right before we close for bell uh a better thing, right? Mm -hmm. The very nice view towards the city, right? You can see the sport hub. Of not, you can see the uh, East Coast Park and of course, part of the sea view as well, right? Our very grand entrance on the Southern Plot, right? Followed by the Northern Plot. So both plot actually come with a different entrance and at the different corner, right? To avoid traffic congestion. So in fact, you will have a very comfortable uh, ingress and egress. And of course, um, the uh, traffic, all this have been has been actually taken into account, uh, right? So definitely, if LTA approve all this plan, uh, all this will be under control, right? So don't worry about the traffic. And the project is by Hoi Hap Sunway, and they are very very uh, good in giving, of course, functional, efficient layout, and they give value to the buyers. Of course, they give best quality. So the buyer who came down. More than 5,000 buyers who visited the show fair, I'm sure they have a very, uh, um, they agree with all these principles that the developer hold, right? After they are look, they look at the product, right? And they are also the BCA, BC, uh, BCI Asia top 10 developers. Well, one thing I want to stress to all of you, uh, this is very important uh, because their main con is straight construction. It's also part of Koi uh company. Uh. You can see when you go to the BCA, you will actually, check IQUAS, which is information on the construction quality, top three scores, okay? Uh, straight construction come in, second place. Uh, so this is their track record, right? Just to give you a little bit on the uh, confidence of this developer and their main con, right? So after seeing this, I'm sure you have already good confident about Hoi Hap and their past track records and their main con as well. Okay, good. Then, of course, there is there some of the property that they have did, Sophia Hill and so on. Right, y'all don't leave because I have the last part, which is very important. I think that is actually the, the, the most important of tonight's sharing. I just want to put across to all of you very fast. Seamless living beginning with smart. Uh, so this is actually our smart home. Huh? Then the very important imported from Europe, uh, all the branded stuff, uh, Laufen, Tessie, right? And of course, we have the Jesse from Italy, right? Vizu from Switzerland, Franker. Uh, all these are good brands and you are able to see in all our collection being a signature or a prestige collection, you will have all these brands in store for you, right? Good or not good, right? <laughs> Yes, so this is really a luxury project and uh, right views for those people who go for a view, we have by city view, land view, and of course we have the East Coast view and the only makes one bedroom all the way to five bedroom, right? So today I am not going through into the shop, uh, the floor plan because I really want you all to come down to the show fair. We have the two bed plus study to show you. We have a three bed to show you. Right, we have a three bed premium to show you. We have a four bedroom, I mean, not a four bedroom, a three bed plus study, which is the 
prestige collection and we have a five-bedroom penthouse in our showroom that you are able to uh, come down to feel, experience for yourself, right? Especially the two-bit prosthetic, I'm sure you will create a lot of uh, demand on this because the layout is really very, very beautiful, right? Also, like what I say, floor plan, I'm not going through with all of you, but one thing I want to show you is actually whichever plan you go, uh, this is actually a two-bit prosthetic, right? Every unit will come with a storeroom. Uh. This is something developer, uh, like what I say, they always give value, enhanced value to the buyer, right? And they really put a storeroom in every type of the layout, including the one plus study also get a storeroom. So that is something very, very thoughtful for them because I guess a storeroom is so important nowadays, right? Yeah, so every type will have a storeroom. So I'm not going into detail for the floor plan. You can actually check with your agents. But today I have a very important message that we buy. I want to share with all of you, which is the pricing of this project, right? God developer actually has give us this price from 2585. What's the time now? Let me check. 2585. Uh, okay, it's one of our way. Okay, very fast. I think another 10 minutes I will be done. Right, 2585, 26, you know, these are all our starting prices. So you can see the quantum is like 1.4 something, 1.6 something for 2 bit. 2 plus study is 1.8, 3 bit, 2.3. 3 bit premium is like 2.7. And 4 bit signature collection is like 3.2. So the question I want to throw to all of you who are still in the room, is this a safe bet or not? After you listen so much thing from me, uh, do you think this price is good? Right? Maybe you are not still able to figure out whether this is a safe bet or not. Let me actually share with you some of the very important data. Right, These are actually our company research data. right? And this actually graph show you the RCI. I want to address the RCI, which is the pink color one. Well, has already gone up to 2006. Eh? Well, across 2006 as of January 2023. Meaning RCR new launch already crossed 2006. And just now I show you continuum new launch only starting from 2,500 something. So which is actually in line with what the market are doing now. right? So this is actually first facts that we have established. right? And then of course, the prediction, prediction for the RCR in 2023, you'll be here, 2005 to 2007. That is actually the prediction, right? But is this happening now? Well, let me show you. Yes, because Tara Hill at Pasi Panjiang already done 2663 per square foot. This was actually quite a recent launch in February, right? Already done 2663, which is a freehold project. So the average price per square foot people are able to accept is two six something, which our position actually is quite accurate for the RCR region, right? And of course, if you look at all the RCR project, uh, right, Rivia, uh, Canning Hill Pierce, One Pearl Bank, Denmark, Leaf and MB, the Reef Tambusu Grand, which is actually a Katong just launched. All these are 99 years. The average price is like from 2.4, 2.5, Two nine three thousand. This is actually the average price, and they are all in RCR location. They are all ninety nine years. Today, the freehold continuum starting price is actually at two five eight five. Do you think it's a safe bet or not? Right. This is something I want you to really think very very carefully. Are you getting a good deal if you have a chance to get this kind of rate? Right. So let's move on again. Why developer want to actually sell at this kind of rate? You know. As you understand, actually, freehold always are able to get a premium uh, above the 99 years. So this is something whereby if you are in the market, you understand, right? Today, a lot of buyers are concerned about interest rate, right? A lot, a lot of buyers are concerned about recession. And this is something whereby it's the uncertainty in the market. And this uncertainty, if you are really understand how the market is going to happen in East Coast uh, in the near future. You will understand this uncertainty, in fact, actually holds a window of opportunity to you. If you are coming into D15, right, because of uncertainty, you get a good deal. Because of uncertainty, developer is very sensitive on the pricing, right? So I want you guys to really think about it, talk to the agent, right? The best is you come down to see the product by yourself. Right, look here, Amber Park, Lambit, 
in 2017, right? Already break even 2171. 2171. That's Amber Park, right? It's actually another freehold launch in 2019, but the on block actually happened in 2017, right? And tells you which is the continuum, right? The on the break even price is 2296. Well, it's so it's so I mean it's definitely higher than what the Amber Park is doing, right? Because there's a few years of time difference. But you look here, Amber Park, this price is 2171. They are selling their project at how much? 25. 25 something. Right? So Amber Park with a break-even price of 2171, they are selling their project at an average price or at the price of 25 something when they launch. Right? So that's Amber Park, right? Even up to the small size are uh, up to 2700 over dollars. Right, but today, you if you are able to get at 2006, do you think you are paying something like back then in the Amber Park price? And that's actually 2019 price. And 2019 is considered what? It's an old price tag. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have a chance to actually bring back the clock. Why back the clock? We are able to bring back bring you back to 2019 and you're able to pick up a good big plot of freehold land. With a 2019 price tag, do you think it's an opportunity? You know? I think this is something that I really want you to think hard about it because if you miss Amber Park, then now I hope you don't miss this freehold launch again, right? If not, then it's too late because next year, Amber Park, no, Mayor Park, which is another freehold new launch, it's going to hit 3000. So you have to actually decide now, right? If not, it's going to be too late for you, right? And Substitute. You see, Amber Park resale, uh, sub sales, uh, already done at 2801. And not long ago, this price actually, another buyer willing to pay 2827. Right? 2801, done deal. Now, 2827 is the highest in the sub sale market for Amber Park. Eh? Right? So those, those people who buy the new launch, Amber Park have TOP, they're already making profits they can sell. Right? So this is the beauty of freehold big plot of land many units, then you are able to sell with profits even before TOP, like what Amber Park buyers are doing now. And they have set a new record in the resale market of $2,800 over dollars. Today, you buy continuum new launch at 2006. Do you see it's a very safe bet for you or not? Well, up to you to think. I mean, decision is on you, but what we do is we only can analyze the data we only can show you the data. The rest of the thing is still up to you. But please talk to the agent that have invited you. I think they will be able to show you more data, right? Then RCR, all the, uh, what call it, the uh, average price, 27, 27. All these are done deal. Uh. The average price in today's market, 27, 26, 25, right? So all the, all the uh, freehold, all the freehold in the RCR new launch, this is the average price, you know, 27, 27, 27, 27, 26, right? So this is a norm. And today, if you are getting a 26, is it a safe bet? No, you are not actually overpay, but rather you are paying something also lesser than compared to some of the project they have already sold in the market, right? And you see, the district 15, average price, 27, 25, 25, 25, 24, right? The highest transactor price even reached 3293. This is actually all district. 15 new launch. But I want to draw the attention to the 299 years project here. Oh, they are also doing a 24, and the highest buyer is willing to pay for this 99 years project is 27 and 29. Right? Today you are getting continuum. Don't you think you are paid? You are paid, I mean you are getting a free hole at cheaper than 99 years price. Right, so this is one project whereby I think it's the last opportunity for all of you to really enjoy, uh, hop on, right, right on the wave and uh, wait for all the future 99 years to, to GLS to launch. I'm sure you will see a good uh, benefits and the price capital appreciation, right, moving forwards. And especially this thing is have a lot of urban transformation upcoming, right. And premium for freehold is always like a 15 to 20%. Today, you are actually 
paying 0% on the premium compared to the 99 years, right? So do you think this is a good opportunity for all of you? Because there's no premium for you to pay, by right? You have a 20% premium, you know, right? But today, because of the very sensitive market, because of the uncertainty here, right? You are able to get something with a very safe bet, right? And why developer want to do all this? Because they have many units. So they also worried, ma. for resale owner, only one unit. So whatever market behave, I, the, the most you keep the unit, don't sell. But for developer, they worry, you know, they have, they have for, for here, got 800 units. For other projects, if you add up, got 3,000 over units. So do you think developer worry, you know, if really something happened to the market, right? So that's why they have to actually be very sensitive beginning. They have to make sure they move certain percentage they have to make sure they move the volume into a, a very safe zone for them before they talk about price height, right? So this is one opportunity whereby you have to grab, then you will see a profit very fast, right? So I hope all of you are able to grab this window opportunity and whether is this price affordable or not, let us look at the quantum, right? So the OCR quantum actually for a two bedroom is already done deal at 1.4 something. And you can see the higher transacted buyer is willing to pay in the OCR 99 years, 1.5 something, 1.6 something, right? So today, if you move to the RCR, the average price the buyer are paying for a two bedroom, 1.59 to 2.014, right? So these are all in RCR and some of them are in District 15, like Tembusu Grand, which is in Katong, not far away from the continuum, right? A two-bedroom averagely is done at 1.654, right? In quantum. And today you are able actually to get a 1.6 something two-bedroom for continuum freehold. <laughs> and then the highest buyer is willing to pay is 1.8. Right, so this is really a good opportunity opportunity for those people who are going for a freehold in Katong right now because of all this 99 years project are setting a new benchmark for all of us, right? And the three bedroom, right? Likewise, live at MB, which is at Mount Payton, right? You can see their quantum is already done at 3.2, 3.2, 3.3. Right, for all their three bedrooms. But today, continuum three bedrooms start from 2.3. Right. So do you want to grab or not? I mean, the answer is up to you. And of course, uh, we have like this one, one per bank, also 99 years project. There are three bedrooms, it's already done you quantum at three point something. Right. But you are able to get a free hole below. I mean, from 2.7, just now I say uh, 2.3, so sorry, uh, 2.7, right? Compared to those people 99 years already pay above 3 million. So this quantum uh, at the continuum is definitely affordable, right? Compared to 99 years, right? Already cross 3 million. So I hope all of you are able to see this opportunity. Don't delay. You have to actually make appointment to come down to the show fed to experience for yourself all this before it is too late and uh, whether is it a two a safe bet or not right freehold psf selling at 99 years price tag i mean up to you do you think it's safe you buy freehold at 99 years price average price for psf 99 years is higher than the freehold right 99 years quantum is also close to a freehold price tag right you pay 2.7 you pay 3 million 99 years people also pay 3 million right so do you think it's a safe bet selling at two 2019 old price tag. That means you turn back the clock, you know, you are able to go back to the 2019 uh, Amber Park time uh, in, in case if you miss out. Uh. Those people who buy Amber Park today, they are laughing to the bank, right? A lot of them are sitting on profits already, right? So if you have not done that, then we have turned back the clock for you. You have one more chance to get a old price tag at the continuum, right? Owning a freehold asset without paying a 10% or 20% premium in price, like what I told you. All the freehold by the right come with a premium, but for this, you don't have to pay a premium, right? And our preview already started from 21st and it's going to end on the 2nd of May, right? So I hope all of you, if you haven't seen, please ask your agent to arrange for you. Don't miss this very beautiful project. And I hope you see the opportunity of the continuum. 
uh, with all the data that I have shared with you, booking is on 6th of May. But before 6th of May, before 2nd of May, if you have the interest, you have to put in the check, right? So that you can go for balloting. And that's when you will get the best buy in terms of the pricing, right? If you are going into the balloting, right? So don't miss. And we have actually experienced more than 4,500 or today, I think, it should be more than 5,000. The whole weekend, the whole show flat was so crowded, right? So if you have not done so, please arrange your people. I mean, the agent that invited you here, make sure you, you come down before 2nd of May, right? I hope you don't miss this opportunity. And I hope today, my sharing actually really enlightened a bit of you. Uh, and definitely, I hope all of you are able to... Uh, make a better decision right based on this price range and uh, some of the data some of the trends that you have seen in the past right and write on it and hopefully you can get a good decision after that lah. you can get a good deal lah. <laughs> also with that then uh, I have finished all my sharing tonight right I don't know whether do you all have any questions that uh, you want to ask me? Yeah, someone say, what? Well, not a fair comparison. Yeah, I'll miss starting price, but starting price, uh, that is actually the only numbers that we know from the developer. Right? So I cannot predict